Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is June 30th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery, and you can see that marine stratus layer right up against the coastline there, starting to burn off for some of the areas here as we go through the morning hours. But the big thing to talk about here is going to be the heat over the region. We're shutting off the precipitation. We're going to turn up the heat here, and we'll take a look at that in the extended forecast. We'll also take a look to see when the monsoon is supposed to arrive here for southwest USA and see if we have any systems moving towards California in the extended forecast. This is looking at a wider view of things here on the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see Beatriz out here on the Mexico coastline, Hurricane Adrian right there. And I believe Beatriz has just been upgraded to a hurricane here as well. Kind of a small storm should be falling apart once it hits landfall, but could bring some heavy rain with it and some gusty winds for the coastline. Now taking a look here, this is Hurricane Adrian out there. It should be downgraded by tomorrow morning or sometime tomorrow afternoon. And Beatriz here is supposed to be a hurricane here as it passes Puerto Vallarta, but again, not that big of a system, not a huge dynamic storm. This is looking at the dangerous heat back to the weather here across the state of California. And you can see there are heat, excessive heat warnings and heat advisories across the region. The coastal areas should be fine here, but you don't have to go that far inland to start running into some pretty hot weather. This is the major heat risk here on Sacramento, California National Weather Service. And you can see there is going to be some major impacts here all the way up towards Redding, California. This is the excessive heat Saturday through Monday, Las Vegas. And check out some of the temperatures and depth Valley could actually get a little bit higher than that up towards 125 and look at Las Vegas likely going to have its first 110 degree reading here as we go through Sunday and Monday very warm temperatures un incoming this is for Phoenix Arizona mm -hmm. kind of ridiculous out there look at some of these temperatures Sunday and Monday at about 115 maybe a tiny bit of a cool down here as we go through the 4th of July and this is the excessive heat warning for San Diego. You got to go inland to get it here, but it does exist. You got the excessive heat advisories and the warnings out there as well. Now, this is looking at uh, for like uh, places like uh, Bakersfield and Fresno, chances of temperatures 105 or above. So, likely headed for your first 105. Well, I shouldn't say first. I'm not sure about that exactly, but definitely look at, at the potential for 105 or hotter temperatures here coming up. Now, this is looking at the heat advisory from Friday to Sunday here, and you can see the excessive heat uh, warning here for much of the interior, including a lot of the I-5 corridor up towards the foothills there, and you can see the heat advisory for some of the coastal range here. But again, along the immediate coastline, as you guys know, you're going to be just fine. Now, looking at McCarran here, Las Vegas, check out some of these temperatures, well above 110 there as you go through Sunday and Monday. A bit of a cool down, if you can call it that. Still temperatures getting up, you know, towards 107, 108 there, probably through the extended. Summertime is definitely here, folks. And this is a cross section. So right here would be about 5,000 feet. This would be 10,000 feet at the top of the chart. And you can see the afternoon heating there at the airport. And you can see that Sunday and Monday, probably the warmest days, but still quite hot through the extended forecast. This is the national blend of models here. This would be for today. Look at widespread 100s across the valley areas. The desert's just getting downright roasting. Death Valley up towards 118 degrees. And we're going in through Saturday, tomorrow, Sunday. You can see the heat just continue. Monday, look at this Death Valley maybe pushing 125, 115 maybe there for areas around Las Vegas, Phoenix. The desert area is just roasting. So if you want to beat the heat, of course, get to the coastlines there. You guys know the drill. And here's the 4th of July forecast probably Death Valley up towards 119 or so and still plenty of 100 degree readings here across a lot of the valley areas here we go Wednesday Thursday you guys get the picture a little bit of a cool down maybe coming after the 4th of July maybe by July 7th there at least dropping back down to the 90s for a lot of the valley areas here so we'll see how that goes over the upcoming days this is looking at something interesting here here's San Francisco and watch as you go through the afternoon hours you're going to see the persistent northwest wind here. And then you can see you get some of this wind coming through here. So at least some of the areas here cool off a little bit more than some of the surrounding areas just kind of south of Sacramento. So just kind of a, a nice little terrain feature there. As the interior warms up, you bring these strong westerlies through during the late evening and some of the nighttime hours there before they wane in the morning hours. Any of you probably living out there probably know about this feature out there as these westerlies blast through just east of San Francisco and south of Sacramento. No. Kind of one of the microclimates there, one of the many microclimates there for the state of California. This is the parent temperature here, and if you run through this, you can kind of see as you go through the afternoon hours, very hot, of course, across the valley areas, but you see it cools down a little bit quicker there south of Sacramento versus surrounding areas. Kind of the highlight there of living near that where that wind comes through the terrain feature there, the lower terrain and the water there. 
So anyway, yeah, one of the microclimates there for California. Now let's take a look at that AM3 KM 12Z. We're looking at the wider view of things. There's Arizona, Nevada, California here. And you can see uh, somebody just turned off the precipitation here across the area. No sign of the monsoon yet for Arizona. We'll take a look at the extended forecast here in a moment. But as you go through Sunday, it showed a couple of storms maybe popping up right there across some of the Sierra Nevada. Nothing too crazy there. But, you know, for the most part, not much precipitation expected across the region. This is San Francisco's cross section here. You can see if you're towards the coastline, you get the much, much cooler temperatures there along the surface. Although the air aloft is quite warm here. And again, 5,000 feet and 10,000 feet is the top of this chart. But you can see that heat dome aloft above San Francisco there. And this is Sacramento. You go inland there and then you really start to get those warm afternoon and evening hours there as you go through the day. This would be for Blythe. And you can see the extreme 40 degrees Celsius is 104 Fahrenheit. So well into the 100 teens here a few days here for Blythe down there in the desert areas. This is looking at the GFS, 500 millibars, 18,000 feet, Hurricane Adrian there. You can kind of see the ridge starting to build here. This is not an anomaly map. This is just a purely the heights at 500 millibars. And you can see the ridging across the southwest giving rise to that pretty extreme heat across the region there. And you can see we're not getting much relief here. And the monsoon is going to be suppressed probably at least through 200 hours out. A little bit of some troughing tries to show up here, but not much of a deal there. Then off into the extended, there's always something off in Fantasyland, isn't there? Kind of showing this trough settling over the Pacific Northwest and trying to include California in it as well. This would bring temperatures down a bit, but I mean, you're talking about 300 plus hours out here where it's purely off in Fantasyland at that point. This is looking at the G GFS out towards hour 270. As you can see, not much precipitation expected. But as we roll out a little bit further, you can see some signs of the monsoon again showing up once you get 300 plus hours out there. You know, eventually it's going to come through here, but you know, the GFS showing it still probably at least 10 days away. This is the European. We're about 190 hours out here, and then it shows a little bit of precip trying to return to portions of Arizona here. Still not much for California, and now we're out 360 hours and still not a very robust signal for the monsoons return here uh, through mid-July. This is the 6 to 10 day precipitation probability, the suppression of the monsoon showing up there. This is the entire state snow water content. You can see 3.2 inches still average. It's still quite a bit of water. I mean, if you were to dump 3 inches in a rainstorm up there, that would be a lot of water coming down off the Sierra Nevada. So there still is some water stuck in that snowpack up there that will be melting during these warmer temperatures. And I've been showing this the last few days uh, days as well. Sea surface temperature anomaly. This is the equatorial Pacific here. This is the warm water emerging on the coast of South America. La Nina is a distant memory in the rear view mirror. Transition to neutral conditions and then you can see El Nino coming in here as we warm up across the equatorial Pacific potentially headed towards a strong El Nino as we go through the year here. Downtrended that ensemble just a little bit here but once you get above 1.5 it's considered strong. So we're likely headed towards that direction almost on the cusp of a moderate El Nino as we speak. This is June 1st here. Uh, this is the European ensemble plume here of what kind of temperatures we can expect. Most of them having us moving into a strong El Nino. We should be getting an update here in the next week or so here with the Europeans. So I'll be interested to see what it says uh, as far as what kind of conditions we can expect. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are ready to beat the heat across the region. You know, you're probably pros at it during the summertime, but it's been pretty cool the last few months. So it might be kind of a shock to some people and you can kind of see the snow across the higher terrain out there still and a lot of that's going to be melting off still getting that nuisance flooding going on Lake Tulare still going out there probably going to last for probably a year maybe even two and of course depending on how much rainfall we get towards the next fall and winter months what kind of snowpack builds up during the next, uh, you know, cool season, we could ex even extend it a little bit longer out there. You know, it used to be a natural lake after all. But anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.